What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Berk, aka Danswait here, and welcome back to more from this commentary playthrough of Elden Ring. I have made it to the base of the Earth Tree, but I couldn't get in because I still don't have enough um, fragments. The last session was a really big one. I came here, I finally defeated uh, Morgoth, like the final one out of the main ring holders, but now we've got to go out in search of more. So, even though I'm nearly 100 hours deep, there is still a lot to do in this game. And all the friends that I've spoken to, I think it took them around 120, 130 hours before they were fully satisfied with their run and they were able to conclude things. So that should give you a barometer of how long I probably will take. There's there's at least another, I think, 25, 30 hours in here for me. And because of course I'm commentating as I go, it, I tend to be a bit slower paced than, than people that are playing like no commentary LP style. So. I think expect around 30 hours at least still to go here. So, an absolute mammoth of a game, but my god has it been good. I have not been hooked on a game like this since pretty much forever. So, really enjoying myself. But, it has been about three weeks since I last played. I did mention that I needed to take a little bit of a break from the game. Um, both to just like get on with other work, like a lot of editing had built up on the channel. Um, I was going to go to Istanbul for a while, needed to see some friends and family, spend a bit of time with my girlfriend, all of these kind of things. So it was, it was a, I needed to step away. And it was a, it was a bit like I had withdrawal symptoms for the first, like, I'd say week or so. But then I think it was nice to have a bit of a break because I had gotten really deep into it. And it had been overall a very intense six weeks or so. And I did need a bit of a break. So. I think at this stage, the first thing I wanted to do was probably head back to the round table. Uh, I remember having the chat with Melina and she's like, come join me in the Land of Giants or something like that. Uh, and I was thinking I need to go back to the round table because there must be some new conversations or something there. And that's probably what I'm going to start the session with. We're probably going to be looking at a few loose ends and a little bit of, like, I guess, admin work almost to, to check a few things, check in on some NPCs and that kind of stuff before we continue on to whatever the new areas are in the game. So, this is where we're at for now. The rolled route. So this is the expanse that we have left to deal with here. So it's still a not insignificant amount of stuff. And of course we have the underground, which I think is also pretty clearly not complete at this stage. There's this sort of very hard line down here. And you've got this bit. So I have a feeling there's at least one more underground area to find as well, if not more. So we still have plenty to do. That being said, I want to start things here. See if anything's changed. I feel so rusty that I'd rather not uh, <laughs> get involved in the major fights. Also, uh, I think before I do this, let me visit the, the Finger Maiden and cash in on the Morgot um, honestly there's so many names and so many places and so many enemies and so many things in this game that I forget the names of everything at the best of times whatever that thing is called you're going to see it very soon well, you managed to return you know what this means the earth tree has burned you the fingers remain still Shaken by this turn of events, they are busy consulting the greater will. When they are finished, the fingers will again offer their guidance. But thousands, if not tens of thousands, of moons must first pass. No matter for me, but you. How will you ever manage the wait? My, oh my. We're not going to be waiting, dear. Receive power remembrance was the word I was looking for. I want to burn the impenetrable thorns. Okay, well, let's start with this. We have... I thought his sword looked absolutely epic. Um, let's just see. Remembrance of Morgoth, the Omen King, hewn into the earth tree. The power of his namesake can be unlocked by the finger reader. Alternatively... Uh, though born one of the graceless omen, Morgoth took it upon himself to become the Erd Tree's protector. He loved not in return, for he was never loved, but nevertheless, love it he did. So, Morgoth's cursed sword, curved greatsword, slash. The weight is pretty good. 
blood loss build up. Ah, okay. Only blood loss. Eh. Arcane needs 17 and dex 35. Another thing I'm going to look into is like changing my spec as well um, with the, the rebirth thing. So I might have a look at that too. Uses FP to unleash many wraiths that chase down foes. Also cool. And the special ability is Cursed Blood Slice. Let's have a look at this. Um, brace, then charge forward to deliver a downward diagonal slice. The bloody trail of the blade is followed by a burst of flame. Additional input allows for a follow up attack. I always like to expand out my weapon inventory as much as possible. So we'll go with this. It does have a bit of a critical bonus, too. And we might be able to respec to be able to use it eventually, so we'll see. Okay. Equipment of champions. Um. Ah, we can get the Fell Omen Cloak. But why? It doesn't seem that good. I guess for its weight, maybe it's good. I don't know. Um, a cloak of ragged fur worn about the exposed body of Margit the Fell Omen. Having slaughtered countless champions during the Shattering, the Fell Omen has become a horror to those who harbor ambitions for the archery or for lordship. I wonder if, like, equipping this changes something, like you get a certain reaction out of people? It's kind of interesting. I think I might get it anyway, it's a bit of a weird one, I kind of want to keep it. The way it says become a horror to those who harm ambitious urgery of a lordship. I feel like maybe wearing it in a certain situation might give you something. I don't know. But let's have a look at this too. I think we already know, but... Heavens forbid. That is not the domain of mere men. The burning of the earth tree is the first cardinal sin. And you say you seek the power of the rune of death too? The rune of death goes by two names. The other is destined death. The forbidden shadow plucked from the golden order upon its creation. Uh, unleashing the room now would be unthinkable. The fingers would never permit it. Nor would the greater will. Mm. <laughs> the fingers dormant, severing our link to the greater will. The realm and all life in ruins. Impossible events transpire beyond the ken of the fingers. Who is to say that the cardinal sin must be cardinal forever? Go on. Finish the job. Take the course you deem most worthy. Well, that's interesting. Okay, I wasn't expecting her to change her tone and say, like, go and finish the job. It goes without saying that there are multiple endings to this game. I've had it confirmed by my friends that have been playing it. And, of course, one way I'll hopefully be able to get them is if I do sense an ending or a point of no return, um, I'll have my cloud save, like, backed up, which will be the one previous save. So once I get to an ending, I should be able to reload the previous save and just go for it again hopefully. So I'm just going to go with whatever ending feels the most natural to me or whatever I stumble into or whatever it might be. Um, I don't know what the endings are, but just to, just to let you guys know, there are multiple ones and we will be seeing all of them, hopefully. You must find kindling. Only the smoldering flame in the great forge of the giants on the highest peak in the lands between can burn the earth tree. But special kindling is required to reignite the flame. For the flame to burn the earth tree, a sacrifice is needed of one who envisions the flame and can lead you to the rune of death. Okay. Now go forth. Let the words of the fingers guide you. Yeah, they ain't prov providing much guidance anymore. Okay. 
So that's a, that's a start. Like I said, that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be focus on, focusing on to, to begin with. Getting back into the swing of things with the NPCs and a bit of the lore and what we have to do moving forward and stuff. One thing I am also going to mention is... We had Fia here and she gave us the, the quote-unquote blessing. Now, later on, we saw that she was standing over Dee's dead body and she, was, she disappeared and she was talking about... I think she was talking about Godfrey or Godwin, one of the two. And she was clearly, like, obviously aligned with those guys. Now, that she gave us, like, one final blessing. And I remember having this equipped and then someone tweeted me and they said that, like, this is actually a curse. And then it made sense because I completely forgot that I had this after a time, as you guys would have noticed too. But because she turns out to be someone that is, doesn't seem to be that aligned with us, it's not um, protector of a hidden temple in the guise of a bedchamber. I mean, this is still interesting to me. And we do need to find Fear again. This is something I've noted down. Like, Fear's quest line is not over. So we've got to, got to watch out for that. I've been wondering about this protection of a hidden temple in the guise of a bedchamber for a while. But yeah, that's a curse that I have, and we can we can get rid of it, so that's good. Wait, how do you... I guess maybe I can't discard it? It's not something I've really had to do before. Um, I'm just going to use it then, and then when it runs out, it's basically discarded anyway, right? Yeah, so there's a little symbol. Um, I didn't know exactly what all of the symbols are, but there was a symbol underneath. Um, underneath, like, the health bar and the stamina bar and stuff. And... That was something that indicated that you had the curse. But yeah, I think the blessing's already gone, so that curse is also gone too. I'd, I don't know exactly what it does. I think maybe it lowers your maximum HP, so you've seen like a slight bit of HP gain there. I think that's what it was. So yeah, that's a curse I was carrying for like the best part of 60 hours or whatever. But yeah, this like hidden temple in the guise of a bedchamber business. I can't swing my sword, I can't... Like, I was wondering if there's a Volcano Manor-style um, hidden wall that you can just kind of go through. But I've pressed, like, triangle up against basically every corner of the room. And I can't swing my sword, so I don't think it's through here. The only thing I will say is, though, in the capital, there were, there's basically another place that mirrors this one. So that might be somewhere to look for fear, possibly. So let's continue talking to the NPCs here first. Take things slow. And we'll get back into it. Well, I took you for dead. No matter it's lay out your own. Just want to see if they have any new conversation. They don't. I've been really enjoying this a lot. This has been good. For now, though, I won't be upgrading anything else. Greetings. Are you here for spirit? Spirit tuning. Okay, we'll leave it for now. Greetings. Are you here for spirit? Let me just go back to this again. I can hear it from across the wing, past the round table. The howling and wailing of spirits in fear of the curse. I can even hear the repulsive twisted malice in itself. You should keep your distance. I know you're strong, but please. Okay. I'm not sure if we found... Nefeli again in recent times. I feel like it's been a while. And at this stage, there's so much of these like little parts of the round table that are pretty empty that I still wonder is there like a hidden wall or some shit that I haven't realized all along. If there is, I haven't been spoiled on it yet. Like, of all the conversations I've had with my friends, they have, n none of them have ever mentioned that, oh shit, like I found something hidden in, in here, but still. 
I'll check the downstairs bit as well. So this is where, yeah, she's still there. So we'll chat to her in a sec, see if anything's changed. I doubt it, but worth a chat anyway. No, no, no. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now, I've lost it. Give the Stormhawk King. What did that mean again? I forgot what the deal with that was, but let's obviously do it anyway. Is that ash? I can smell the ancient storm in it. My thanks. I'll gladly take it. Maybe that helps continue her quest line. I mean, I assume it does. I'm not like Roderica. I don't feel the presence of spirits, let alone see them. Still, this ash, it reminds me of my first hawk. Thank you. Mm, okay, now it's coming back to me. In this ash, I can smell the ancient storm. It reminds me of my first hawk. Okay, so nothing more about that for now. Maybe I have to go back to where I found it, but that's something I'm going to note down <laughs> because I don't remember at this point of where I got it. But if I return there, then maybe Nefeli will be there. I don't know. So I'm literally going to write this down. Nefeli Hawk. It is going to get to the stage now where if I start to not really know what to do or where to go for something, I'm going to start looking it up because it's it's been... It's been a hundred hours and obviously the game is so huge that if you've missed a clue or you've not understood where something's supposed to be or you've forgotten a crucial piece of information or whatever it might be, uh, it could take you a crazy amount of time to find something like a specific entrance or a specific area, specific weapon, specific enemy, whatever it might be. So I'm not going to let that sort of really drag out my experience after this stage because we've done so much exploring. And, uh, and trying to find everything we can sort of on a blind run that I am going to be googling things more as we go and now that it has been over a month since the game came out I'm able to um, I'm more able to find resources as well especially like the first week things were being updated pretty slowly because the game was so huge and everyone's still trying to make their way through it and compile all the data for all of the different regions and stuff so now I'm pretty sure almost everything barring maybe the most minute of secrets or glitches or whatever is all documented and usable now so that should be beneficial right so that's that now Gideon is still one of the most interesting people we have to talk to and this character still hasn't talked to me now this this character I did ask about I was like what the hell is the deal with this character um, are they going to be there like throughout? What, what the hell happens with them? And I did have one of my friends tell me that at one point when they came to the round table, I think everything was dark or something, and then this character tried to fight you, and then after you kind of fought back a bit and you had a bit of a fight with them, then it was broken up or something, and then you got to actually talk to them or something like that. So I don't know if that's going to happen to me eventually, but that's something that can happen with that NPC apparently worth noting. No bell bearing. Um, yeah, I don't think I need any of these for now. Right, Dung Boy is still here. The Defiler. No. Wait. We found his thing, that's it. You have felt the curse. I can smell it on you. The box, yet tender. Apparently my seed bed is ripe and waiting. It was a brief respite, I must say. Go and unshackle my corporeal flesh, trapped in the sewer jail below the capital. There you go. Okay. I can kill you and defile your corpse, then the pox will truly be your own. No thanks, buddy. But finally, we're able to, to find this guy. 
I guess, out in the real world and deal with him. So he's another one to add to the list. I am going to probably be... The capital might be the first place I return, to be honest. So now Gideon as well, and that should be the final piece of action from the round table for now. Uh, uh, you. What is it? Okay, at least we have a new option now. Let's have another look at this again, just in case there's anything to... Well, at least for me, that needs refreshing. There are four more demigods yet to be located. Mikola of the Halig Tree. The Unalloyed. His twin, Melania. The undefeated swordswoman. Luna Princess Rani, daughter to Renala. And the one only known as the Lord of Blood. Rani is said to have cast aside her great rune. So here at the Hold, we seek the whereabouts of the remaining three shard bearers. If you should learn anything of these matters, I'll trade your findings for a hidden treasure or a long lost right known only to me. We both desire to stand before the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord. As such, I hope we are compelled to work together. Yeah, I still don't get his premise because, yes, he wants to be the all-knowing, he wants to be Elden Lord, but I always thought the Elden Lord is kind of a position you've got to take like, by force, you know, you've got to get, especially in the, the situation that we're in now, how does he expect to become Elden Lord if he just sits here and reads all day? Is he not supposed to get out there and try and get the shards and slay people and shit? Like, what is his expectation? That we do all the, the heavy lifting, slay everything, get all the shards, and he's like, okay, can you let me be the Elden Lord, please, or, or what? Like then does he fight us or it's it's a bit of a weird premise with him but we do have a new option so let's have a look at that if you're heading to the forge of the flame of ruin in the snowy mountain tops of the giants you'll need to find the grand lift of road beyond the forbidden region or go if you would take no heed of cardinal sin the two fingers lost their purpose a long long time ago that one's not too tough because, I mean, the game's given that to you already, right? There's this bit here, the rolled route, so that's fine. Very well, so that's all we have for, for Gideon as well. So I believe we're done at the round table for now. And so I'm going to go out in search of some, some loose ends before I continue. The last thing I'll do, I'll just jump down here anyway, just in case there's anything or anyone. Unlikely, but it's worth a check. Okay, and it's another place I'm curious about. Like, does it end up leading to somewhere else, or there's a hidden part of it, or. Like, one of these doors just randomly disappears and takes you somewhere else. It's also interesting that he doesn't mention the, the Dung Eater at all. I thought that he was a Shard Bearer too. Because he's like mentioned at the start of the game. The very first cutscene, I believe. In any case, uh, where to start? Now. I... I do want to head back to the capital a bit. Um, also, of course, along the way, if we do find any more like catacombs or any optional bosses or jails, I call them goals, of course I did, but um, if I find any more jails, then I'll do that too. I have the Black Knife Ringleader noted as well, but I think when I'm back in the sort of battling groove, I'll do that. For now, let's just go somewhere here. So continuing to, to go it blind for now, but I'm not like I said, I'm not going to spend hours and hours just looking for one thing. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, we've got the sewer key, which is also an important find. But for now, uh, let's level up. Now... Yeah, so the, the thing I want to adjust a bit is, like, I want to get rid of some intelligence and give it to Faith. 
instead. So then I think I'm going to go a little bit more strength here. A beefy 80,000 runes there. Uh, also, let me just check if I've got any more. I don't. Okay. Right, for now I'm going to just try and go. I guess the sewers is one of the clearest places I've been indicated so far. But this area was dangerous, so maybe this wasn't the wisest place to start, but... <laughs> I'm still going to try. No, actually I won't. I need to find where that... The place that was like a mirror of... Um, Fortified Manor. Yeah, I think it was the, this place. I'm just wondering if Fia is going to be here. There's also paintings. I want to. I want to find paintings too. So if I can find the room that's basically the equivalent of the bedchamber, I might be able to. I might be able to find something. So I'll be looking out for that. I just don't know if there's a way to get up to that higher floor. There has to be, because there, there's obviously there's that bit there. And I think if I can get up to that, then I'd be able to... I might be able to find fear. Because then I'd be able to get into that bedchamber upstairs. Man, I'm nervous. When it comes to the actual like combat side of things... I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing again. But thankfully my weapon's obviously a bit OP. So we'll definitely make the best of that. The, music's hit, the music here is pretty nice too, by the way. When you're exploring, the music isn't really the most... <laughs> I guess, like, prominent thing, but it's nice to have here. When you're exploring, they go for that full immersion vibe. So yeah, the primary thing for me is to try to understand how to get in to there. My guess is it might have something to do with this bit, actually, if I can climb down this sort of trunk, or like root of the earth tree, maybe that helps. Let's have a look. There's a few more things I've got. I've got Blythe written here, who I've basically ignored for like 50 hours. Um, I've got the Black Knife lead I've got to take out. Um, and there's a Rogier note as well. So there's definitely plenty to do still. Um, I'm, this is the most direct thing that I can see that leads to it, so I'm going to try to do that. I think that takes me towards it. This is still one hit KO range, which is a nice bonus. It goes higher still. I don't know if I ever took this even higher route. No, that's a bit much. And we'll try and keep uh, full death to a minimum for now as well. So I could line them up like this. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's not quite what I wanted. Let me keep going for now, just clear out this area. There might still be a path I can take along these routes. I was kind of hoping to slice through like multiples here, but let's see. There you go. Just really got to make sure you don't fall down here. I'll still be looking to see how I can get to this bit. I think there's a there is a path down. One quick thing I want to check. Um, doing up the brightness ever so slightly. Still seems a bit too dark sometimes. Like this bit's meant to be dark, but some bits I still think they're not meant to be that dark. to fall down onto that bit. It might be a good item. It's in a bit of an awkward place. I'm going to have a quick look here. I think I'm going to be able to find a new like room or area through this. I'm going to keep looking. It's connected to quite a few different bits. Just have to watch my step. Garb, full bloom. Okay, holy grease is what we found. Now I think I've got to take this little turn here and go lower. And that might bend me back onto the mana route, possibly. But let's just keep going anyway. Maybe there's a pretty big elevation difference between this bit and the manor. We'll see. Oh man, it went right. Oh. I thought that was someone crouching down. I thought it was one of the guardians. It might still be possible that I'm on the right path. You can see how dark and murky it's getting around here. Okay. So, I mean, I want to continue on to this bit, but... Yeah, so there is a, there is a, uh, a route that takes you there. Yeah, that's the one I need. I've got to figure out how to get to that one. Honestly, I might have taken it already when I was first trying to get here, but maybe I overlooked like an entrance to... I'm pretty sure it's just that one. Yeah. So yeah, maybe I did take it already, but... It's just the process of getting back into it.
Guardian Sword Spear. Nice. So I think, yeah, I've been there before. So I came up from that route. So I remember there was something guarding it. It was like a gargoyle or something. But what I didn't do, I think, was to come to this bit. So there's a little entrance there. So this might be it. We'll see. Always gonna land that hit. Oof. That was nearly really punishing. Right, I'm gonna try and head into that little room that I can see there, and maybe that takes me back inside the manor. Which is what I'm after. playing Ghost of Tsushima or something with this music. So much so that like, I'm wondering is this a bug or something, because I had Ghost of Tsushima um, selected last on my PSN. Yeah, pretty sure this is the upper floor now. Good. Sounds fine, wet blade. I think that that gives you like different options in, like with the smiths. Yeah, so this is the bed chamber. All right, here we go. Good. Hero's rune. And why my sword? Is this like a gesture we have to do to unlock something? I'm so shit with gestures as you've seen already, but let's see if we can find by my sword. with this one I can swing my sword so maybe there's something more to it I'll continue looking around a little bit more maybe it's not specifically in through here but there's still more items to be found and well I might encounter something here too I wonder if there's, oh, I was going to say, I wonder if there's a two fingers here. Or we end up finding something to fight, I don't know. Coded sword. Still no sign of fear. Coated sword, there it is. Um, holy damage, faith B, let's see. Hidden sword once granted to the tarnished of the round table by the two fingers. A formless cipher comprises his blade, which deals holy damage no shield can repel. Champions would gather at the round table in days long past when the two fingers were masters of oration, yet their flesh their flesh yet full of vigor. Unblockable blade. Imbue the side blade with light, extending its length, then strike with a sudden sweeping attack. This attack cannot be blocked. I definitely like the sound of that. Very light as well. 2.5. Do I go heavy load with that? I do. Damn it. Let's also see. Varsity raises maximum FP. Though is FP consumption. I don't think I need that right now. This gives me very good strength, so we'll just keep it. 
Just in case. Okay. Let's keep going. 